Hi, and welcome back to Psychology with me, Mr. Snyder, and today we are going to continue our study of developmental psychology and discuss prenatal infant and childhood development. So let's get started. Uh, learning objectives today, we're going to talk about the conception through birth, the prenatal part of it. Uh, the sensitive and critical periods in development and learn about childhood physical and motor uh, development and then we'll do the rest of the learning targets next time. So talking about the prenatal development, hopefully this is review for you, hopefully your parents and you have had the talk, but uh, just so you know the uh, ovum is the female sex cell that it, the female gives, it, also known as the egg. And fertilization occurs when the union of the ovum and the sperm takes place, and that creates a zygote, which is the cell uh, that happens, and it then has 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mom and 23 from the dad. Mitosis is when that cell splits into two cells, then four, then eight, and so on, until the cells develop into a baby. And twins occur when division of the zygote doesn't happen as planned. Uh, there's basically two main types of twins. There's monozygotic, or you might know it as identical twins, and dizygotic, which you might know as fraternal twins. Monozygotic twins form when one cell or one egg, uh, I'm sorry, one zygote itself splits into two separate masses. And these masses uh, de each develop into a separate embryo. And so each one has uh, e infants developing from the same embryo will have the same uh, sex and the exact same heredity. Dizygotic twins or fraternal twins means that two eggs get fertilized by two separate sperm. Um, resulting in the development of two zygotes in the uterus at the same time. So there's no splitting in dizygotic. It means, uh, just think of di as in two, two eggs. And uh, psychologists and developmental psychologists find these twins very, very um, beneficial because they have the same um, heredity, the exact same heredity. It's identical. And so if you can find a set of identical twins that were split at birth, you could compare the differences between the two of them and any difference would then be attributable to the environment or the nurture side of the debate of where they were raised. You can also do this with adoptive children and adoptive parents compared with their biological parents. Um, any differences or most differences would be attributable to their environment. Uh, here's a figure of the identical twins or the monozygotic on top and the fraternal twins or the dizygotic on the bottom. Again, di being two separate eggs that are fertilized and mono being one egg is fertilized and split into two. Okay, in the womb, there are three stages of prenatal development. There's the germinal period, the embryonic period, and the fetal period. The germinal period means uh, the zygote moves down the uterus and begins to implant in the lining and cells begin to split and differentiate into specialized cells that will become other parts. And some cells will stay blank, uh, basically cells that could become anything. And we call those stem cells. And these stem cells, researchers can use these to grow new organs or repair neurological damage. Uh, one of the things they're trying to do with my son and his vision is if we can take a stem cell and make it and program it to be a retinal cell and then implant it into the back of his eye. Uh, it could grow into a new retina cell, replacing some of the broken ones in his eye and he his sight would be improved. So that's just some of the things that they're trying to do with these uh, stem cells. The embryonic period is from about two to eight weeks after fertilization. Um, the major organs and structures begin to develop. Uh, the cells specialize even more and become different organs. And then the fetal period is everything after that, um, eight weeks after conception or two months until nine months. The weight increases from about an ounce. Um, the fetus is about an ounce. And then it's born at the average is about seven pounds. Organs develop and become functional 
during this time. So here are some uh, a look at the germinal period um, where the zygote divides and moves down the uterus. The mass of cells looks like a hollow ball, attaches itself to the wall of the uterus, and then the cells begin to develop into specialized skin, hair, heart, uh, whatever. And then here's the embryonic period. Uh, once it is attached to the uterus, it's called an embryo. And then the cells continue to divide. In two to eight weeks, it has primitive forms of eyes, ears, lips, uh, little arms, legs, and actually a beating heart. And then the fetal period is where the size of the fetus will increase from about 20 times uh, to what it was. So the greatest uh, period of growth that we ever undergo is in the womb. Um, and then the organs of the fetus develop and become functional inside the womb. Critical periods in prenatal development are times where certain environmental influences have an impact on the development of the infant. And these can pass from the mother to the infant. So some hazards that one needs to look out for are teratogens. And teratogens are any factors that can cause a birth defect. So one of the most common is uh, alcohol. Alcohol during these critical periods, mostly during the first trimester of pregnancy, uh, can lead to uh, fetal alcohol syndrome or a series of physical and mental defects in the child. And uh, exposure to alcohol in early pregnancy is the leading known cause of intellectual disability. Here are some other uh, teratogens and the effect on development. So obviously drugs like marijuana, cocaine, alcohol, nicotine, but then also substances like uh, mercury, caffeine, vitamin A in high doses, diseases such as measles, mumps, um, and even high water temperatures, taking a shower that's too hot could be a teratogen. So um, the books from experience, the uh, pregnancy books go over these in high detail, and uh, it's good to avoid them during your pregnancy. Uh, the physical development, of it's amazing. Immediately after birth, the baby begins to breathe. Sometimes that's why they spank the baby to make them cry and make them start breathing because if they're crying, you know they're breathing. Uh, the, bro the blood begins to circulate when the umb umbilical cord is cut and the body temperature is then regulated by the infant's own activity. It's a little um, primitive the first couple of days and so it's good to keep them warm under blankets at all times, but then it will pick up as it goes along. Physical development, as far as reflexes go, babies have reflexes to help them survive. They're an evolutionary trait, and it's involuntary behavioral patterns. And uh, pediatricians will find these. They'll come in and they'll test for these to determine whether or not an infant's nervous system is working okay. And uh, you can see here, and the letters are pretty small, but pretty much they're in order from left to right, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, the grasping reflex, if you put your finger in a baby's hand, it will grasp it. Uh, the moro or the startle reflex, if you startle a baby, it will throw its hands and legs out. Um, it, it, it's heartbreaking when it happens because you don't mean for it to happen, but then they all of a sudden get startled and throw their arms and legs out. Rooting is when you brush their cheek, they will turn towards that way and try to look for a nipple for food. Um, but that's a reflex for surviving. Stepping, if you hold up an infant, they will begin the walking motion at least in putting their feet on the ground. And then sucking, if you put something in an infant's mouth, they will suck on it because they think it could be food. Motor development, uh, as far as child or infants go, from birth until two years, they basically become, you know, from being com completely helpless to little people. And here's how they go in order. They first raise their head and their chest off the floor. Uh, they then roll over from their uh, front to their back or back to their front. Some babies do one uh, first and some do the other. Uh, they can then sit up with supports like against something. Then they can sit up on their own. Then pretty soon after that, they'll begin to crawl. And then after that, they will begin to walk at anywhere from 8 to 18 months is normal for a baby to begin walking. At brain development, as far as an infant goes, at birth, their brain has more neurons than ours do. 
has over 100 billion. Ours has about 85 billion. At birth to three years, the neurons grow uh, in size because the brain triples in, in weight during that time. Uh, because new dendrites are forming, making new neural connections. The axon terminals are uh, making new connections to the dendrites, and we're increasing those number of connections. And it's a natural process that happens. There's no way to speed it up um, by giving the baby new smart baby toys. That's all bull crap. Just giving them enough uh, experiences to new smells, sights, sounds, you know, as long as you expose them to new things, that will help their uh, development pretty pretty well. And then there's a process you need to know about called synaptic pruning, and that is the necessary loss of neurons. Basically, the brain doesn't want to exert any more energy than it has to for evolutionary purposes. So it will basically cut back and kill off some of the neurons uh, to make room for the functioning connections and cells that it needs, but it doesn't need all of the connections at birth uh, that it has. And then as far as sensory development at birth, most of the senses are pretty well off. Uh, touch, smell, and taste are well developed. Uh, newborns can basically hear. Um, hearing is functional at birth, but it takes a little while to get to its full potential, but they can uh, be responsive most responsive to high pitches. And that's why you want to talk to a baby up here. Oh, baby, baby. Um, but my voice might be, um, I don't know, it could be responsive to my voice, but um, it might frighten it. So it's good to use a higher voice. Vision takes at least six months to fully develop. They can only see um, a couple of feet in front of them at um, birth. Uh, pretty much all they can see, or they can only see the outlines of faces, their cones, and take a while to develop. Um, basically, it takes about six full months to get full vision. And then, how do we know, like, what a baby is staring at, or how do we know about their sensory abilities? Well, psychologists are pretty creative people, and they've come up with two uh, methods to study an infant's sensory abilities, and one is preferential looking. We assume that if we present a stimulus to a baby, the longer an infant spends looking at that stimulus, the more it uh, prefers that stimulus over others. And then the other one is um, habituation, which we've kind of talked about as far as the brain goes, but this, in this context, it means that infants stop paying attention to stimuli that do not change. And so we can measure a infant's sensory ability as far as that goes. That's all I have for you today. When we get back uh, into our next lesson, we'll talk about childhood development, cognitive development, things of that nature. But I think this is enough for today. So go ahead, fill out those learning targets. Seriously, bring your questions back to class, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.